Today I'm going to show you my favorite method to dodge and burn in Photoshop. All right. Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and today we're going to be using Curves adjustment layers to dodge and burn. It's going to be so much more effective than the traditional dodge and burn tool. Cool. All right. So here in Photoshop, you are actually able to use the dodge tool right here. For instance, it's going to make things a little bit brighter. There we go. As you see, there's the before and after with that. Or you could go to your burn tool, which is going to make things a little bit darker before and after with that. But the problem here is that those are applied to the background layer, meaning they're not as versatile as I would like. So instead, I recommend using curves adjustment layers. So let's go to our layer. We're going to go to into new adjustment layer and over here to curves. Now let's hit OK. To start with, we're going to just click here on our curves and make that a bit brighter. OK, we're going to go nice and bright with this. As you can see right now, it's visible everywhere. So what we want to do is I want to just click here on the layer mask and hit Control or Command I to invert the layer mask, making it black. Now, if I hit B for the brush tool and paint with white as my foreground color, anywhere that I paint with white, there we go, you're going to see, is just going to make this effect visible. Okay, so literally just made a curves adjustment later, made it brighter, as you can see here, and then I'm using a layer mask to paint in where it's going to be visible. All right, let's hit undo. Now, of course, you don't want to just choose a small hard edge brush because, you know, your effect is going to look like this. What you want to do is go ahead and make your brush soft. Okay, so right click and here where it says hardness, you're going to go all the way down to zero. That's going to be really important. Okay, so now at least you have a soft edge brush. That's the first step. The next step is here where it says flow, you're going to bring this down to 10%. Right now with a flow of 100, you're going to see it just looks like, you know, it's just on or off basically. But if I take my flow and I just type in 10 and hit enter, now I paint and it's a lot more subtle. You have to go over an area over and over and over again and you kind of have a build up effect. There you can see it. Now if I just use a regular brush, let's just choose a like a regular brush with, with a flow of 10% to show you how this works. Uh, you have to go over an area over and over and over again for you to get the full effect of your brush, okay? So this is kind of how flow works. If you want more of an effect somewhere, you just literally paint over it. If you want less of an effect somewhere, you paint over less. And I did all that with one brush stroke. So that's the idea with flow, right? Is that you want to just be able to make, you know, for instance, I want a little bit on her forehead, okay? So I paint there, maybe a tiny bit over here on this part of her face, maybe a little bit more on her cheek right over here, maybe a little bit more on this part of her face. So you just literally paint over the area like more. You just go over it more times and it'll make it more dense. So that's basically what we're doing on the adjustment layer, okay? On this adjustment layer, I can paint it visible like over top her eyes. There we go. I need that to be a little bit more visible there, down near her neck, things like that. We're just literally going around our image and anywhere we want it to be a little bit lighter, we're just kind of like painting over that area a little bit more, okay? There we go. So this is the first step of dodging and burning. It's kind of like evening out the image and determining, hey, where do you want the image to be a little bit lighter? All you have to do is kind of just like go over that area a little bit more, okay? And literally I'm doing this with one brush stroke, okay? I haven't let go of my brush yet. It's literally just one brush stroke. Okay, so you can see just turning that off and on, I'm able to see there's the before and the after already really nice. So let's just go ahead and paint that a little bit more. I'm going to hold Alt or Option and take a look. That's my layer mask right there, okay? <laughs> I know it's kind of random, but this is just the areas that I thought it needed more. I just, you know, I went over those areas more and more and more until the effect became more and more visible. All right, there we go. So I'm using kind of a large brush for this, and beautiful. This looks really good. So this is kind of like the first step, as I said, for dodging and burning is just choosing the areas that you just generally want to be like a little bit brighter. Okay, so again, let's just turn this off and on to see how that looks. Already you can see it's really nice. We brought a little bit more light into our subject's face and we made sure that all this is properly exposed. Like before, it was just way too dark and here in the after, it looks a lot better and it looks just more well exposed over overall. Okay, so that's kind of like the first step. Now, the next step is going to be actually like working with the individual highlights and shadows in your subject. 
So let's go ahead and create another curves adjustment layer. For this, I can literally just click and drag this curves adjustment layer to the new layer icon. There we go. And then on our layer mask, I just want to fill this black, right? So let's just go to edit and then down here to fill. And then I can just choose my contents are going to be black and hit OK. It's just a duplicate of the curves adjustment layer. So for this, let's go ahead and zoom into our neck. Uh, let's say like we have this nice highlight here, right? With this, you want to use your open and close brackets with your brush, okay, to make a brush that's about the size of the area you want to paint. And then literally, we're just going to go in and paint over it, okay? I have a highlight area right over here, okay? So we're just going to kind of paint that in just a little bit. I have a highlight area over here, so we're going to kind of paint that in too. There we go. We have a highlight here. So this type of dodging and burning can help areas look a little bit more three-dimensional. Maybe I want to make her shoulder a little bit more pronounced, so we're going to make a larger brush there and kind of paint that in there to make her shoulder a little bit more pronounced. Her neck has a highlight here, right? So let's go ahead and just paint that in just a little bit. Do the same thing over here and then the same thing on the top. So almost done here. We're using a brush that's about the same size as the highlight and just go over the area just a couple times and it's going to help it look a lot more three-dimensional and make your subject in general just look a lot more interesting. Okay, let's just turn this off and on and we see what that's done. Okay, really, really nice effect there. And you can see not too difficult. Let's move over to our subject's face. We're going to do the same idea. So, you know, over here on top of our subject's lips, there we go, this area here. I'm literally just going over the areas that are already have a highlight on them and we're kind of enhancing those, okay? And what this is doing is it's making our subject look more three-dimensional. There we go. In the eyes, we can make the eyes a little bit brighter here. There we go. We're going to do the eyelids here. This is a big one. Do the eyelids right above the eyelids. It's some kind of cool makeup. It's got this, you know, really interesting effect there. Okay. And then just do a little bit on the forehead to kind of even this light out on our subject's forehead. And I'm going to come in here and go around the nose here as well. Okay, this is just to kind of make the face look a little bit more three-dimensional, okay? There we go, just paint it away a little bit there. So that's the before and after with our subject's face. Fantastic, and here you can see the face and the body together. So let's just go ahead, we're gonna turn both of these off and then back on so we can kind of see how that works. Now, if you, maybe you don't feel so incredibly confident in like painting over each individual highlight area on a subject, there's another way you can do this. Let's go to layer. We're gonna go down to new adjustment layer and over to curve. So this is all the same, hit okay. Make it a little bit brighter. All this is the same so far. Okay, let's make those other layers invisible for now. We're gonna to go to the layer, hit controller command I to invert the layer mask. All this is the same as if we were gonna paint and we're gonna paint here at 100%. I'm just gonna paint right over our subject's face at 100%, okay. There we go. All of this is literally the same technique that we had before. I'm just, instead of painting, you know, delicately, I'm just painting 100% all over top of my subject. I'm not even trying to be like, you know, accurate here. So we can see it literally just made my whole subject brighter. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use blend if. So I'm gonna double click right over here on this gray area. This is gonna bring up our layer style dialog. Let's just bring everything so we can see all. The layer style dialog. This is where you access your like bevel and emboss and stuff like that. But over here, you're gonna see this tool called blend if, okay? What you wanna do is where it says underlying layer, okay? Keep in mind, this is making it brighter, right? This curves adjustment layer is making her brighter. You can see even the background. I want this to be invisible in the dark areas, right? So we're gonna use blend if to do that. Where it says underlying layer, I have this little slider that I can move now, okay? You want to hold alt or option right now if i click and drag it it looks like really gritty like sandpaper it doesn't look too good okay so what we need to do is hold alt or option and then separate these two little points out you can see it's actually two different points right so if i take this and bring that over then it starts to disappear from the shadow areas of my subject and just be visible in the highlights of the subject let's hit okay there all right now i'm just going to paint this away from you know like the you know <laughs> Let me get the right tool. I'm just going to paint this away from the background and then turn this off and on so you can actually see what it does. But basically, I use blend if to only have this effect be visible in the highlights. So I'm telling this to be visible in the highlights and then making the highlights brighter using this curves adjustment layer. 
All right, cool. That looks pretty good there. And just like that, fantastic. So let's go ahead and turn this off and on now. And you can see it's literally just grabbing the highlights and making those brighter. And I can continue to dial these in. If I double click right here, I can then choose, there we go, let's bring that right over there. I can then choose how much of these highlights I want to be visible. So I can really get this dialed in. See this? I can get a really strong dodge and effect version here where it's just grab, see, like there you can really see it, right? It's just grabbing the highlights and making the highlights brighter. It's leaving the shadows alone. And this is a really great way to get three dimensional effect on your image. And this is what the layer mask looks like, right? It's like a very easy, simple layer mask. Instead of trying to paint over each of these highlights, look at that, when I turn that off and on, you can really see that, right? Instead of trying to paint over all of the highlights on my subject, I'm using blend if to do the job for me. So literally just using that curves adjustment layer and then blend if. And then you, it's maybe a little bit too bright here. Just double click here in the curves adjustment layer and I can make it brighter or less bright. I could even go dark if I want, but I, I don't want, I don't want. Okay, there we go. So literally just taking that, look at how nice of a job that does. So if you combine that technique with these other techniques here that we've used, wow, you know, we're starting to get like a really, really nice image. And then I can go in here and maybe make these a little bit more subtle because now I've stacked a few effects on top of each other, right? So let's just go ahead, we'll show you, this is the first one where we just generally brightened a lot of our image. The second one where we came in and, you know, carved those details. And then the third one, there we go, where we use blend if. So all those, let's just shift click all those and hit controller command G. All those are, you can see, doing a really, really nice job brightening our subject and adding more three dimensional detail, which is so, so cool. Now, we did half of this, okay? So dodging is when you make things lighter and burning is when you make things darker. So this is all just dodging that we did there. It's just making it a little bit brighter, okay? In fact, I want this area to be even brighter. So let's just grab one more curves adjustment layer. Boom, super easy to do. Let's make that brighter. Controller command I to invert that. And then, you know, just right over here in this area. I just wanted that to be a little bit brighter. I thought, you know, why not? It could use it. There we go. Fantastic. I'm just literally painting this in where I think it could be brighter. And you can even come in here, uh, click on your layer mask. You can go to filter, uh, blur, and then Gaussian blur. Okay. Like you can, if you paint it a little bit too locally and you would just want to kind of blur your effects, you can do that here with a Gaussian blur. It's just going to make it a little bit more subtle. There we go. Fantastic. Hit okay. And there we just have a nice Gaussian blur there. Okay. So keep in mind, all this is just making our image brighter, but we also wanna make some parts of our image darker. So that's called burning. How do we do that? It's literally the same exact process. We go to layer, down to new adjustment layer, over to curves, okay, and hit okay. This time, instead of making your curves brighter by going up, you just go down. That's it. Instead of up, you go down. And that's literally the exact, that, that's how you burn. So on the layer mask, we hit control command I, okay, and then we're going to burn. So basically I'm just gonna paint in areas that I want to be a little bit darker. And I'm trying to follow, you know, where the shadows already exist uh, in my image, right? Like I'm, I'm not trying to recreate something new here. I'm using the detail of my subject to tell me, okay, where, where are these shadows going? And, you know, kind of enhancing these, right? Like already, there we go. And generally, for my personal preference, um, I generally will, like here you can see, you can even give it like eyeshadow or something like that, right? There we go. Look at this. Pretty cool, huh? Um, for my personal preference, usually I will use more dodging or lightning than burning. There we go. We can make the eyebrows a little bit darker if you want to do that. You can do all kinds of stuff. There we go. Maybe make this a little bit darker. And then I'm gonna go out here and zoom out a little bit more. And then I'm gonna really, you know, like make a large brush and just kind of make, you know, some of the water here darker. Maybe add some ripples here in the water. There we go, something like that. You know, kind of make this water a little bit darker back there. You know, fantastic. Kind of just draw more attention to my subject by making her background area a little bit darker. Nice, that's looking really good. 
and then there we go. Fantastic. So I'm just going to turn this off and on, and you can see these are the areas that we made darker, also called burning, and used in conjunction, they can really make a big difference. So you can totally just sculpt areas with dodging and burning, like I did, you know, like some eye makeup kind of sculpting here, or you can just use it to kind of draw more attention to certain areas. You can also use it to even out some areas. Like for instance, you see this area of our subject's forehead is just a little bit dark right there. So if I went into one of my dodge layers and I just use my brush tool and I just painted right over here, you can see I just lightened that up. See, there's the before. There we go. You see this before, it's just a little bit dark there. And here's the after, I just lighten that up. And it can have the effect of making your skin uh, like a little bit smoother. It can make the skin tone a little bit more even too. You just want to make sure you use the brush that's about the same size as the area you want to paint and then you're going to be good to go. All right, fantastic. So let's go ahead and uh, see here's the original image as we started. You can see now that our subject looks quite dark. Here's all the dodging we did. Our subject looks really good and we've added some three-dimensionality to her skin and her facial features and then here's the burning that we did. So let's just go ahead and group those two, shift click them, hit control or command G, and then there's the before and the after with this dodging and burning in Photoshop. This is so nice because I can turn this off and on at any time. I can go in and you know I can turn any one of these individual layers off and on at any time. And if I think that I made any of these effects too strong, like this effect, or if I wanna make it stronger, literally I just double click on this curves adjustment layer and I can make it brighter, okay? I can do this at any point in time and I have so much more capabilities than just using the traditional dodge and burn tools which would apply them directly to my layer. Now I have this, I save this out as a PSD and you can come back to it at any time. So big, big tips on dodging and burning in Photoshop. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in a comment down below what you'd like to see next. Give us a big thumbs up. It super helps out the channel and click on subscribe if you wanna get more free tutorials. Thanks again. I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.